A while back, I had the chance to spend the entire winter at the South Pole Station. Once you're at the South Pole Station, and it's winter, you're there for good, for the whole six months. Because for six months, it is pitch black. The sun never comes up. Planes cannot come in. So you need to be ready to stay there for six whole months. It was about the first weekend. Oh, I was really, really happy to be there. It was so cool. I thought, wow, this is just so amazing. But it was about a weekend when it started taking a toll on me. And you got to remember, this is this is 850 miles from McMurdo. So it's not like I can run away and just go there. I'm stuck there. And every day when I didn't have anything to do, I went over to one of the windows and I just stood there and I stared out into the darkness. Now we had lights on the outside so we could see because sometimes people did go outside because there were experiments running. We had this little tunnel down into the snow and they would have to walk outside to get into it. Uh, big oversight in my opinion, but whatever. And one day, while staring out there, somebody walked out of the darkness and into the light. And it's somebody I'd never seen before. And there's not a lot of people at the South Pole Station. The maximum number of people on, during the winter is only 50. And this was a time when we didn't, we didn't even have 50. We had like 20 people. And this guy, he wasn't one of us. He was, I, how the hell he got there, I don't know. I just stand there staring. And he waved to me. And then he walked back into the darkness. Sorry. Kind of spooked right now. And this is the first time I had been out there. And I asked some of my friends, like, what, what's with the guy that, that was out there? They had no idea what I was talking about. And over the weeks, this, is, this kept happening. I would just sit there and stare. They got worse and worse and worse. And I kept seeing this guy show up outside the station. Sometimes he would walk right up to the window and knock on it. Now, I wasn't very familiar with the layout of the station, but the window I was looking at, there was nothing for him to stand on. And yet, there would be sometimes knocking on the window. This was elevated off of the ground, like a good 20 feet. <sighs> One day, He's just standing out there. And I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't stand it anymore. What is this, why is this guy doing this to me? Am I going, going crazy? What the hell's happening? So I run outside. I fully expected him not to be there, but he is just standing there. He's staring right at me. And I walk up to him. I say, well, what do you want? And he looks at me and says, there's a lot of snow here. I said, yeah. It's dark. I said, yeah. You don't look very happy, Mr. Catman. He is my real name. Not Mr. Catman. Which freaked me out just 
I don't know how he knew my name. I said, yeah, this this place, this this is horrible. I shouldn't have come here. And he said, well, there's one way to fix it. He looks out into the darkness. I see. I say, you want me to go with you out into the darkness? He shakes his head no. And he comes up to me real close. And then he says, whenever you're feeling bad, whenever you're feeling down, whenever you think you can't go on, just remember, you can always play Skyrim. And then he walked out into the darkness. I never saw him again. I went back to the station thinking, what the hell? What the hell is Skyrim? I'd never heard of that at the time. I go back to my room. And on the bed was a copy of Skyrim. And I opened it up. And the disc was in there. And there was a little note. And it said, I think you need this, Mr. Catman. I'm, so, I'm, I'm sorry if that was really spooky for you guys. But that, that was very spooky for me. But that's how that's how it became a famous Skyrim. Great game. Bye now. And if you and if you like wasting your money on Skyrim, you like wasting your money on me. There's a Patreon link down below. Give me your money. I'm I'm poor. I have no income. Gimme, gimme, gimme.